as Randy had indicated, these are our uh, BRSU school goals. They're, some of them are going to be tied to CIP goals, which are a requirement that the AOE has for us to access federal dollars. Um, so I'll start with the larger organization, and then I will be followed up by my building level colleagues, and they'll give um, an overview of their goals that are somewhat connected or may not be connected because they may have elected to go a different route. Um, so the BRSU overall organizational goals are um, in two domains of our educator quality standards. They're in academic proficiency and safe and healthy schools. And the bullets that you see below are kind of the sum or the parts to the sum of academic proficiency and the parts to the sum of safe and healthy schools. Uh, pre in previous years, we have had um, personalization as a goal, but this year, just given its, um, I guess, unusual nature, we've pared it down to two goals and they are required in these areas. Every school in the state of Vermont has to have a, an academic proficiency goal and a safe and healthy school goal for um, continuous improvement purposes. So here is our wordy goal. Um, by the end of the 2020, 2021 school year, comprehensive computer adaptive assessment data. So I ready in this case, previously we had been using maps. I will indicate the consistent implementation of BRSU supported curriculum and instructional models leads to continuous learner growth as evidenced by 65% of students representing historically marginalized groups, achieving grade level average growth in the areas of reading and mathematics. It's a really wordy way to say um, that our computer adaptive assessments, usually they're, nor they're nationally normed. So they shoot for about 50% of students um, hitting their average growth for their any particular age. Uh, I think it's by biological age. Um, so what setting a goal at 65% is actually quite ambitious where you might think 65% isn't that ambitious. Right now, these numbers um, are for our overall student body are around 45 to 55% re reach that goal area. For our historically marginalized groups, so I can further define that as well, that's going to be um, so low socioeconomic status, that's going to be um, any kind of racial data that we have. Um, it's really easy to do for the SU because our end size is much larger and we can have an actual population to work with, whereas some of our school level data for historically marginalized groups is really small. Slide, please. Um, so here are some things that we're gonna to do to address uh, and achieve this goal. So we're, we're um, really paying attention to our new teacher orientation and mentoring system. This year, this, this has been kind of interesting because there's been a lot of onboarding, um, getting people familiar with the systems that we're using to even deliver our education right now. So uh, we have instructional coaches that are working um, on all of these things with our, our teachers as well, our veteran teachers, as well as our newer teachers. We've adopted the iReady uh, instruction piece, which is different than the iReady diagnostic testing system. So it will give our kids a personalized learning path that is uh, generated based on their results on the diagnostic assessment, which they're currently doing um, this week and the next two after this as well. So our safe and healthy school goal is um, related to physical environment. It's related to disciplinary data, um, multi-tier system of supports, so you can see that we're looking for a 10% reduction of significant incidents reportable to state. And we're going to achieve that through a, a BRSU district level team with representation from every school. Slide, please. And uh, this is interesting because we don't necessarily have great data from last year, given that our schools were physically closed from March to June. Um, so that how do we get behavioral data when kids are at a distance other than behavior on um, virtual learning platforms. So we are focusing this year, as you are all well aware, on relationship safety and trust and establishing those communities um, at a distance and also in person. So second step is a program that teaches social emotional skills. Uh, and we have that in, present in all of our buildings. Um, the SEL stands for social emotional learning and PBIS is positive behavioral interventions and supports teams in every building, uh, a representative of which would be on a larger BRSU team. Uh, we're gonna take a look at a deep dive into the overall PBIS data that we collect as an organization for all six of our schools. Um, responsive classroom is something that is present in our um, buildings, as well as developmental design, I know is a goal area for a lot of our middle school um, principals. And we are also, uh, as you are all aware, we're really focused on equity this year and uh, understanding how to meet the needs of all of our students. 
Hi, I'm Rosanna Moran, principal at the Dorset School. And we also have chosen um, goals in the area of academic proficiency and social emotional learning. In terms of our academic proficiency goal, um, by the end of 2020, 21, the iReady data for the Dorset School will show a 15% improvement from this fall. So what we're taking right now to spring of 21 in the percentage of students meeting proficiency in foundational skills in math and reading. This will be accomplished by continued staff professional development on writing clear learning targets, as well as plans for progress monitoring student acquisition of foundational skills. Um, when we talk about the foundational skills in language arts, we're talking about vocabulary, key ideas and details. And in math, we're talking about numbers and operations from the primary grades knowing their numbers to uh, operations in algebra and measurement and data in all grades. And we found that our scores in those areas varied widely. Some, some grade levels did very, very well um, in ELA based on the maps from January. 90% of our students in grade two were average or above. Um, in grade seven, it was only 52% in ELA. In math, 80% of our students in grade one, average and above, 60% in grade eight. And there was really quite a variation as you went through each grade level. So what we're looking at is the focus on personalization and to personalize learning paths for each student to address their lagging skills, those gaps that they have, or students who have acquired that and the need for enrichment. And iReady does a wonderful job with person forming that personalized path for students. Uh, in terms of targeted lessons, then taking that information we get from that and to group the students flexibly for the acquisition of lagging skills, or wherever they happen to be along those learning scales, which we worked with Bill Rich last year on developing learning scales. So that instead of just a beginning developing proficient, we really stretch that out more with specific skills. Uh, we're looking at the curriculum to ensure vertical alignment of local assessments. We have all done, starting last year, Hegarty for phonemic awareness in the primary <laughs> grades, foundations for phonics and framing your thoughts for um, really breaking down the writing process. And the progress monitoring is the piece that I'm most excited about because that's something that we really have never had a universal tool to do that. Teachers had their own form of progress monitoring, meaning looking at a child week to week and how are they doing instead of waiting for the next big assessment, looking how they're doing as they're going along. And the iReady does provide that availability of progress monitoring, which is great. We can look at the next slide. Our second goal was with the social and emotional learning. And we found that particularly in our middle school, we were dealing with a lack of consistency and lots of low level disrespectful incidents. Not so much the, the major things that, that would be dealt with individually, but that low level disrespect from students toward each other, as well as toward the adults. So our goal is that we will improve the culture and climate of the middle school, specifically students treat adults with respect and students treat each other with respect, which was one of the um, questions on the Swiss data from PBIS, the survey that we gave the students. And this will be measured by an increase in the percentage of students who report students treating adults and each other with respect from the current last year, 40% to 65% on that Swiss survey. And a 10% reduction of the monthly behavior tracking forms from the 2019-20 school year to the current school year in the area of disrespect. And next slide. So what we're looking at for action steps on that, our middle school entire team attended a wonderful workshop on relationships and belonging with restorative practices and to have consistent use and reinforcement from one teacher to the next in the middle school in terms of their standard operating procedures. So every major activity that the students are doing is broken down into 
when it, you come into the classroom, first you go to your cubby and put your things away. Then you go to your seat and all those things really broken down. We have a daily advisory with the middle school. So they're using that restorative circles, not so much for the restorative piece of it, but to build community and lots of activities designed to increase the sense of student belonging and responsibility. Um, the introduction in the advisory using that time to introduce the standard operating procedures and lots of targeted instruction through that advisory on respect for self and others. And the middle school has divvied up the advisory so that one teacher does it every week. So the entire middle school is getting the same information each week in advisory. The other thing is the focus on positive adult language, which comes from responsive classroom, which is a consistent recognition and reinforcement of the expected behaviors. So not only do we teach them what the behaviors are, we're constantly reinforcing that this is what the expectation is and recognizing students when they meet that expectation. Really big <laughs> emphasis on consistency from class to class and teacher to teacher and having the adults share the effective use of positive adult language. So ways that they address it. 